Alors, bon début d'après-midi, mesdames, messieurs. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this press conference. This is organized by la tribu de la presse du gouvernement de Québec, Quebec government. Mr. François Legault, Premier of Quebec, will speak first. And then Mr. Fitzgibbon, Pierre Fitzgibbon, Quebec's economy minister, followed by Dr. Horacio Arruda, public health, Quebec's public health director. Good afternoon. As we can see, in view of today's statistics, the situation is critical in Quebec regarding COVID-19. If I look at the current situation today compared with mid-August, we went from 50 new cases per day to 900 cases per day. So we went from about 100 hospitalizations to 275 hospitalizations. Today we have 16 new deaths. This occurred over a few days, but still 16 new deaths, it's a lot. And these people, these are real people. And I understand that there are some Quebecers who are tired of complying with the guidelines, but if you're tired of um, meeting with the health guidelines, I ask you please to, to, to think about those real people. The current situation led us uh, within the few last hours to announce new measures. I understand that those very measures may be hard for a lot of people. And I'm not happy to tell you about the fact that we've implemented those measures. It's because we want to uh, reduce contact uh, socialization contacts and mitigate uh, the spread. And we want to have less uh, infected people, less hospitalizations, and eventually uh, reduce the number of deaths. Since the beginning of the pandemic, in Quebec, we were the province that has supported businesses the most. It's very important to stress this, uh, no matter how you want to calculate this in percentage uh, as pertains to the GDP, we doubled our support, I mean, compared with the rest of Canada, it's almost twice. We'll continue furthering this. Tomorrow we'll, annou we'll announce some measures for the cultural sector, for example. Uh, we understand how it, this can be a hard situation for uh, theaters, for concert halls and so on. Some actors had been um, hired for some time, and I know it can be hard. Tomorrow we'll tell you more about it. Today, uh, the uh, Quebec's economy minister, Pierre Fitzgibbon, will tell you uh, about the measures regarding bars, restaurants, uh, cinemas, and uh, the reception rooms. I don't want to give you all the details. Uh, I'll give him the floor for that, but by and large, we know that there are programs covering wages. This is on the federal government level. As for us, we'll reimburse 80% of uh, rental fees, um, taxes, electrical bills, and other admissible expenses. And I believe that this will enable those same people to go through the next 28-day period. I would like to come back to um, a few things, uh, a few concerns, a few topics which have been mentioned by the population. First of all, the CHSLDs, uh, the residential and long-term care centers, even though the situation will always be something to monitor, in the CHSLDs we have to mention, and we stress this, that the situation is being monitored. Everything is under control. It has nothing to do with the spring situation. Right now, there are only 16 of such long-term care centers where nobody is infected. If we consider all these CHSLDs, all the RPAs, all the other in intermediary um, settings, in all residences, there are 287 cases, positive cases, in total. It has nothing to do with the 6,000 people maybe that we had in spring. It doesn't mean we should not continue being prudent. But I want to reassure people, the 900 cases that are being added every day, this is not occurring in those residential and long-term long care centers. It's cumulative. There are 287 cases in all residences, not just the CHSLDs. We also have the RPAs and RIs. So I've heard also that 
tests. A lot of people have mentioned uh, many things about tests. I'm hearing a lot of things. It's very important to contextualize things well. We did 5,600 tests. Now we went up to 15,000 tests. Right now we're conducting more than 30,000 tests and analyses every day. In terms of the percentage of uh, population, uh, uh, by ratio, measurements, we do more than the rest of Canada. It's very important to stress this. Most people have test results uh, quickly, but there are a few cases when it takes more days, and this is unacceptable. The um, difficulty is in labs, laboratories. It's not when you conduct the tests, but, it, but it's when you do the analysis about those tests. That's the uh, uh, bottleneck situation. Things won't change overnight, I want to be honest with you, but we work very hard so that in all regions, everywhere, we can provide you with quick results. I'd like to take advantage of this tribune to tell you also, to all Quebecers, it's very important to get tested only when indicated, which means generally when you have symptoms or when you uh, were in contact uh, with someone that was declared positive. If you're not sure, consult with uh, Quebec.ca. Go onto the site or call or dial 1-877-654-4544. You know, dial the line. And then you will be told whether or not you should be tested. I've heard uh, people mention a lot of things about the personal protective equipment. I want to reassure you, it's going to take a while, a few months, whether for mask, masks or other PPE equipment. I mean, part of it is manufactured in Quebec. So there are no concerns now uh, currently regarding PPE. Now, something else that I'm hearing about, it's schools. Um, uh, specialists have all kinds of recommendations, but I trust public health authorities. Public health authorities don't believe for now that it's necessary within classrooms for children to wear masks. It's possible that uh, during the next weeks or during the next days that measures be modified, improved or changed. But this is important, and I must say this, we want to follow the recommendations uh, that the health authorities are uh, giving us. And to conclude, this morning I got up and somebody uh, noticed this for me and told me about it uh, yesterday in the evening. I've been uh, the Premier of Quebec now for two years. Nobody at the time, two years ago, told me that I would have to manage one of the worst crises in Quebec's history. But uh, today is October the 1st. Uh, so I was moved by the trust from Quebecers. So I was moved by that. I'd like to thank today all Quebecers. Thank you to all Quebecers. Thank you for trusting me. I'm extremely proud to be uh, your premier. Thank you so much. Now in English. Good afternoon, everyone. Today's numbers show us how critical the situation is. I know we've made some tough decisions in recent days, but they are lives in danger, and fighting the virus must remain our top priority. That being said, since the beginning of the pandemic, our government has been there to help our businesses that are feeling the effects of the restrictions. I know the recent measures are tough for cultural businesses. Tomorrow, we will announce new financial, uh, financial measures for the cultural sector. Today, we're also announcing financial measures to help owners of bar, restaurant, restaurants, and other businesses that have to close in red zone. Our Minister of Economy will give you the details. I also want to say a few words about our testing capacity. The number of tests has increased significantly in the recent months. The majority of people who get tested have their results quickly, 
but there are people who have to wait several days. That's not acceptable. We're currently increasing our capacity to analyze test results more quickly, and we ask people to get tested only if it's advised. Lastly, I realized this morning that it's been two years since we've been elected. I want to say that it's an honor for me to serve Quebecers, and today I want to address them my thanks. Thank you for your trust. Thank you. We'd like to give the floor now to Mr. Pierre Fitzgibbon, Quebec's economy minister. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Welcome, everyone. Now, we were struck a few months ago by the COVID. As Quebec's economy minister, my point of view is that in order to support businesses, we had to react fast. The federal government has announced some economic stabilization measures, which created some type of social net, which has uh, helped a lot of businesses for several citizens from Quebec. Today we've acted making sure that we would have significant liquidity available within our regime with uh, subsidies programs. No other provincial government has done so. Le Pacte, managed by Investment Quebec, and Le Pop May, managed by the FLIs. These are the programs which are amongst the most significant programs uh, of such kind in Canada. As a government, at the same time, for several months, we've worked towards re uh, the recovery, furthering the recovery of the uh, economy. We've worked on several dossiers in order to make sure that the economy would grow within the next months. We've made some announcements, uh, significant announcements, with um, uh, the uh, Financement Québec. And so a lot of businesses, most small and medium-sized companies, must close their doors today after Monday's announcement uh, done by the Premier. We're not happy to say that the government asked for businesses to close their doors. Restaurants and bars had to close um, and other also uh, businesses. We want to avoid um, having to opt for a more uh, generalized lockdown. We wish to say to all those owners, business owners and their employees, we must uh, say that we're thinking about them. I'm thinking about the s small and medium-sized businesses. They don't have the resources, the networks maybe, to be able to face such a brutal situation. I must tell them that I must tell you that we're here to support you and the support that I will announce today, I hope it will help you go through these very harsh times. So I'm announcing right now that for simplicity, simplicity measures, we've simplified the current programs to reimburse certain fixed uh, fees for businesses that uh, operate in red zones and that must close their doors. This new component pertaining to our existing uh, program is called L'aide aux entreprises en région en alerte maximale. This is the AERAM. -E and so the Though the companies that are focused on uh, with this program will be able to obtain up to fifteen thousand dollars for uh, October, this is a forgiving amount, as we call it, in order to compensate for certain fixed amounts that those companies must continue paying, even though their operations have to stop because of closures. So all restaurants in the red zones are admissible, to be clear, even those uh, doing delivery services or doing um, takeout services. The admissible fixed amounts include municipal taxes and school taxes also, uh, rental fees, the paid interests on um, mortgage fees, not, not the capital, but the interests on um, mortgage fees insurance, gas, and uh, telecommunication fees, amongst things, and permits, licensees, and association fees. To understand the mechanics behind the loan, how we calculate admissible fixed uh, sums, or you have web pages on the Investment Quebec pages, web pages, and the Economy Minister uh, 
uh, ministry, also department. If you need $50,000 or more within the pact, it's Investment Quebec that will be your main contact um, office. For less than $50,000, the Pope may, as we call it, please get in touch with your MRC. For less than $50,000, we'll uh, get in touch with the MRCs to support them so that requests, financial aid requests, will be uh, supported. We're in touch with a lot of financing institutions for uh, file management in order to manage certain files. So I want to finish on a positive note. We've seen that the Quebec economy was uh, quite positive. Things were going very well before the pandemic. I'm an optimistic person in nature. As most entrepreneurs, I feel that once we um, see the light at the end of the tunnel, uh, bright days are really part of our future. The economic recovery is a huge plan, is a thorough plan, and it will help us support the recovery for the province. Thank you. A few questions. We'll start with TVA. Alain Laforêt. Mr. Premier, Mr. Minister, Mr. Public Health Director, what's the assessment you carry out in light of the data that you have regarding the number of businesses that might close their doors forever, go bankrupt? Some people say 15 thousand dollars is not enough to be able to go through October, November, December. Those are the harshest um, months for them because we'll have to forget about the Christmas parties and restaurants. And also the workers that have nothing, they're not, they're left with nothing since yesterday since they have no access to CERB. Answer. If we look at the aimed at businesses by Monday's announcement, we, according to our assessments, there are about 12,000 businesses that will close their doors, that might partially close maybe also. We uh, provide a significant amount before 80 and $100 million. If we consider 12,000 uh, businesses, 75% of them might uh, request this forgiven uh, type of subsidy. We're talking about, uh, what, a sum of uh, roughly 90 to $100,000, which is a significant amount, which will enable most uh, companies, most businesses to go through October. That's when cl closures occur. Now we're talking about something broader. We're talking about all the businesses in Quebec. When we look at the experts, if we look at our data, we see that there's a number between 20 and 25,000 businesses that are facing very harsh times. Um, their situation is really bad, and it's clear that we think that the liquidity liquidity program that we just created, number one, combined with the uh, wage benefit, which is renewed by the federal until June, uh, and uh, we are improving the aide au loyer, also the rental uh, support. Uh, with those benefits, I think most people will be able to survive. But of course, we have to understand that some people won't be able to go through the pandemic situation. The main message today that we want to convey is that for the 12,000 businesses that are subject to closures, our program, which is about $100 million for October. This is the uh, fitting program, given the situation. It's appropriate. Question for our Ottawa colleagues, Mr. Minister. Will the federal government, uh, should it, must, uh, should it um, apologize for the October crisis, la crise d'octobre? Answer, yes. Would, can you be clearer? Answer, there are measures that were uh, implemented and people were arrested without any uh, reasons, and so somebody should provide apologies. Question. Five questions uh, in just one question, maybe, if I can. Giving you examples of emails we've received from different people. So, for, for instance, if people want to go uh, trekking during the weekend, two uh, mothers who want to go outside and they want to respect with the two-meter distancing and they want to uh, push their babies on some type of um, carriage. And so if neighbors want to rack leaves, if they have a co-ownership type of uh, building and they live in it, this is not clear. What, did, what does it mean, an outside public gathering? This is forbidden. What's the definition of this? A gathering is comprised of how many people? This is not clear. Do you want to start? Answer. Uh, as we know, it's all in the details. It's very important. A gathering means a lot of people will gather in a given setting for a certain objective. As long as we are a family bubble and we uh, participate in an activity in a park, for example, those types of things, we're not gathering. We are within the same family bubble. However, if we start gathering with uh, the neighbor and another family bubble and we're not complying with the two-meter distancing, there's a risk 
of getting closer. This is normal, of course, because you, we are human beings. Human behavior is at stake here. This might be an issue. Municipalities also might close, shut down certain settings, certain parks where people are attracted uh, for gatherings. If you want to go on a trekking, we're not telling people not to do that. If you want to do some trekking in a park, uh, you could do sports in that park as long as you comply with the distancing measures. With the guidelines, I, I don't know if I'm clear enough. Do you have any other examples? Question. There are so many examples that I could give you. For example, people who play soccer in the evening. Well, regard, uh, answer. In terms of sports practicing and sports, uh, I, I can give you more details later. I understand this. We have principles like that. So we have to analyze each one of the specific situations. When we talk about soccer practice in the evening, we're talking about a group practice. They come from different bubbles, if you want. So there might be some contact uh, amongst people. And this is not recommended unless there's some monitoring for sports. Well, Monday, this will be clear. I can tell you now, we'll have precise examples in terms of guidelines, and we want to make sure that there is consistency in comparing scenarios, what happens in a school compared with the, uh, some type of uh, concurrent activity for sports, for example. In the meantime, what I can tell you as a guideline is, if you remain within your family bubble and you're not in a situation where you would have to be closer than two meters in terms of distancing, that's okay. Let's take another activity. Let's say we open up a park and people start uh, with their barbecue activity and so on. That's not the same type of activity at all, and we want to limit those activities. Question. Uh, this is not my sub-question, just a follow-up question. We understand that it's stricter than in spring, right? So what can people do? In the spring, you allowed people to go outside and walk outside, and two people cannot jog together and so on. Answer, if, if they're in the same bubble, it's not too bad. As long as they uh, respect the two-meter distancing, we should not interpret and go overboard and, and interpret things. No, if you're doing an activity, let's say you are with someone, somebody else pertaining to another bubble, let's say your neighbor in front of your house. You have to keep at a distance, two meters minimum. You should not give us the impression that uh, you are pertaining to the same family bubble. That's the principle. We don't want to prevent people to participate in uh, sports activities or we don't want to prevent people from uh, going outside. That's why we have to find terms in such a way. It's all a matter of context. Follow-up question. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You've asked your question. Well, I want to continue. As journalists, you've all received uh, emails on that. This is not a debate, madam. Normally, we have a question and a follow-up question or a sub-question, as we call it. That's it. Olivier, go ahead. Question, Mr. Mr. Fitzgibbon, you said you are in touch, you're talking to businesses, and things are relatively going well. What are the statistics uh, regarding the impacts of the COVID on businesses? for the first wave. Answer, in terms of closures, business closures, we're satisfied because there's a lot of liquidity because of our programs, our sub subsidies, and because of banks, because of financial situation in 2008. Banks created this situation. Now this is the contrary. So we get subsidies and loans. There are a lot of loans. That's what we can see. For a small and medium-sized business, uh, having too much borrowing is a problem. Uh, it's an issue. But we must enable corporations to survive, number one, and then we'll make sure how we can structure things in terms of capital. Today we're announcing a subsidization uh, program, the $15,000 and so on, but we talk to a lot of businesses and I'm connected with them and I can tell you that morale is positive by and large, but we're getting into the darker period of the year. I don't want to play with words here, but before December and so on, November, these are dark times. We have to be careful about what's happening. We have to monitor the situation. We can look at unemployment rates. It's going not too bad. The economic indicators, we have to look at that and the economic recovery programs that we've announced also, things we've identified, this will provide us some momentum and people should start trusting things again. Question. You've talked about uh, Monday, Mr. Arruda, some announcements. Is it legal to do sports, uh, team sports, legal or not? 
Answer, we want to avoid gatherings if you have a team uh, sports activity. For example, uh, um, the garage leagues, you know, uh, if people are in the same shower uh, facility and so on and they're going to get closer than two meters, it's not the best situation. I don't believe the, uh, the police will give uh, fines during the weekend. People might be scared. Our goal is not that. It's not to give tickets. It's not to pu punish. Our goal is not to punish. If we come up with those measures, it's because we realize that, unfortunately, if we don't give a framework with those guidelines to people, then people will gather. Otherwise, what's at stake here, it's not maybe the soccer game, but it may be the parents uh, and the bleachers, you know, uh, in the stadium and people getting in touch around the sports activity and so on. There might be things circulating around an activity. And by the way, Mr. Premier, Mr. Legault, I must tell you that this is your uh, anniversary as a premier, but again, I want to tell Geneviève, uh, my daughter, also, it's a birthday um, for her, and I'm really sorry I'm using this uh, airwaves um, time to, to, to tell my daughter. Um, but I'm very proud of her, and I wish her happy birthday. Question from Le Devoir. Mr. Premier, Dr. Arruda. I'll echo my colleague, uh, Véronique. There are, are a lot of um, questions about the zone the red zones. What do you tell Geneviève, uh, what do you say to all the women and men of Quebec if they want to bring their kids, they want to go into a park, they, they have strollers, they want to get into a park, what do they do? Answer, I'm not going to tell them to change parks. This is not an easy thing. But things are outside, okay? I'll be clear. The problem will be um, arising if there are games, you know, there are, uh, people are going to be online if there are games and seesaws and things like that. I don't know if other activities are possible, walking, going to zones that are, are not as crowded. The idea is not to be strict and punish people. The idea is to avoid social contact. In certain parks, when it's not too crowded, it's possible to go to a park, but there's traffic, you know. Again, uh, there's a way possibly to find ways to play with a kid, with the children, with a ball. If you have um, maybe, I mean, I mean, you could go to a place that's not as uh, crowded. That's what I would have told Geneviève, that this is what I would recommend. You may go to a court, your own courtyard or you may not have one, but anyway. Please exercise your judgment. I believe most people um, can decide things right. I think there are people, most people are informed, but if we realize that if people are gathering as if it was a family uh, gathering and people are really, really, really uh, too close, then there will be warnings. The police might intervene. But if you maintain the two meter distancing, as long as you cover your face, you have some mask, and um, as long as you comply with the guidelines and the number of people together gathering, if it corresponds to what I would call a family cell or the bubble in your residence, that's okay. You haven't been uh, uh, confined uh, to your house. There's no house lockdown right now. It's just socialization elements we want to consider that, you know, two families getting together. Those are the rules, outside, inside, outdoors or not. This is the simplest way for me to explain things. Question. The governmental decrees, Mr. Legault, this is not very clear, and it leaves room to a lot of interpretation, different possibilities. Are you going to correct things in as much as I understand that things may not be well written, this may not uh, correspond to what you wanted, perhaps uh, lovers, the lovers issue, if they live in two different residences, two different houses, they might have uh, children, uh, the decree forbids it, but will this be allowed? Answer, it's hard to foresee all possible exceptions, but our objective is not to prevent two people, as you say, two lovers, if they have a child together, if they're not living together, you know, the idea is not to uh, prevent them from seeing each other if they're lovers. And this is what we have to keep in mind. What's our goal? And I'd like to come back to your, uh, your former question. The idea is to have less possible contacts with people you don't live with. You can go to a park. Uh, there are bigger parks where you could, there could be different bubbles, different families in the same park. 
as long as they comply with a two-meter distancing between them. I believe it's a matter of um, common sense. If you start looking at the small exceptions in a granular way, you might say, okay, we need clarification here. If the person is not alone because the person has a kid and maybe the spouse lives at a different house, of course these people can see each other. But we will, we will need to clarify things through uh, some clarification. But I think the main principle is well understood. It's quite clear. Question from Le Journal du Québec. I'd like to continue also talking along uh, the same lines. As all my colleagues, I've received a lot of emails from many people. You say that these are small exceptions, but those same small exceptions revolve uh, around several people, and some could have been clarified ahead of time, maybe. Isn't there a risk here? Announcing such strict measures, isn't there a risk that we might be in a situation where the population stops trusting the government when you, when you forgot to mention all those same uh, exceptions? Answer. It's a common sense issue. Quebecers understand that currently this is not the time to invite guests to home. This is not the time to invite friends or people who don't live with you, even family members if they don't live with you. It's not the time to invite them for a dinner at home. However, if there's an elderly person, if they need a supporting person to help them, or if you need a plumber because of a pipe issue, of course you need someone to come in and help you out. I think Quebec Americans can use their judgment, and uh, we've tried to be as clear as possible, but uh, there's always room for judgment. It's a judgment call. Question, you said that public health authorities don't believe that it's necessary in classrooms for children to wear masks. These are measures that could be improved, that might be modified during the upcoming weeks or days. You've seen in the newspaper today that in spite of the repeated messages, there are still a lot of uh, young people, the youth, gathering uh, 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 in uh, the schoolyards, uh, not complying with the two meter distancing. Dr. Arruda, isn't there a possibility that uh, sanitary measures might be become stricter around schools or in schools? A answer, it's possible. We're following the number of uh, uh, outbreaks and so on, and we want to identify the source of spread. Now, people can wear the mask, but may not wear it well. It might be under the nose. Again, we will act if people gather, um, even in school or outside, outdoors, in parks and so on, if people don't comply with the distancing rules. Now, you must understand that. If you ask me, is there an action that would be impactful to be enforced, it would be that one, intervention. Now, will we need to intervene throughout the day, even during uh, class time? Well, this will depend. Will this be for primary school level or secondary school levels and so on? This will depend on the epidemic situation. I must say that we have to be extremely careful. Causality creating something else, but it, it, there's no one single causal source that would create everything. No, uh, things are more complex. We're going to look at the different indicators with the public uh, authorities. There's a positive impact if you wear a mask, but there might be impacts for certain children. Now, uh, uh, I'm not saying, I'm not pointing fingers at people. This is not uh, a perfect science uh, where one cause would explain everything. We have to be careful. Question. You've uh, asked Quebecers to use their judgment. Uh, what could we do or not? We need judgment for that. It's so hard to understand all those rules in order to make some ruling. I mean, these are precise questions, but there are real questions. Are we uh, losing uh, the battle in terms of how you convey the message? Because common sense is hard to apply because people don't understand how to and uh, do things in their uh, concrete life. 
Answer, I trust Quebecers. Quebecers are starting to understand what it means to be at a distance of two meters, two meters away from the person that you're not living with. This will be implemented as much as possible, more and more so, and people understand that. Quebecers understand that uh, now is not the time to uh, invite people, guests for a party or for uh, dinners. Okay, they understand that. But if there's an emergency, if needs be, if it's essential for someone to come to your home, we don't want to punish anyone. We don't want to punish people. We want people to opt for all the possible measures in order to avoid being in contact with other people. We've chosen a certain type, uh, well, a certain number of activities. For now, we might add more within the next days. But we said it's quite obvious in a bar, in a restaurant, if you're 250 in the theater hall, once you enter the room or during the event, a show, because of droplets in the air, there's a risk, obviously. So we tell people, unfortunately, we have to close those settings during 28 days only, we hope, in order to mitigate uh, the spread, because this leads to hospitalizations and deaths. This is not banal. This is significant. If people can do even more than whatever we've announced, well, so th they should do it. Question. Mr. Arruda, you talked to the Premier and other people uh, during the crisis session in your own cell. Are you talking about a third possible wave or a fourth possible wave before a vaccine is commercialized? So are we going to eventually see more restrictions or not? Should we get prepared for harsher, stricter rule uh, guidelines? Answer, yes. Yes, but there are a lot of things that have to be considered every day. We consider different issues. Uh, there's all sorts of possibilities. The answer is yes. We do it. We have meetings. Uh, shall I say, even with experts, they come and make presentations about what's around the corner. But uh, before, I mean, things can worsen, things can improve before even starting to talk about the third wave every day. My first concern is to see what can we do today? What are our concerns today? What can we do on a daily basis? Should we adjust things, change things, improve things in schooling settings and so on? And how is the population responding? What, what are they doing? So the questions that you ask yourselves, these are the same questions we ask ourselves. And again, the recommendation we have is remain in your own family bubble, less interactions with people if you do it, maintain distancing, comply with that. And we had to close certain um, sacrificial settings, unfortunately. Uh, some settings had to be closed because uh, this was an incentive um, against uh, complying with the bubble guidelines. And again, we want to keep a certain leeway in order to try to analyze and understand the situation. We've talked about fines. Police officers will use their judgment. They'll use common sense in order not to punish people. Sometimes you can just uh, issue a warning without issuing a fine. But sometimes we see um, how shall I say this, exacerbation, or perhaps people are negligent, or whether people are organized or not, people um, are not serious. And so sometimes it's a good thing to have a more constraining approach. Question, Mr. Premier, it's been two years that you're a Premier now. Uh, in our history, will you be uh, remembered as the Premier that has cancelled Halloween twice? Answer, I hope not. On a more serious note, this is a question that people ask me many times. People wonder, on the 31st, will we be able to have a standard, normal Halloween with uh, mm, children going from one house to another for trick-or-treat? Answer, we gave ourselves 28 days. We still have a few days ahead of us. We want to um, have less 
interpersonal contacts. It's going to take a few days. Around the end of October, I'll be able to answer your question. For now, it's too early. We've just started this process. I can answer your question. Question, Mr. Fitzgibbon, for, uh, what I understand is that the measures you've announced are monthly. If restaurants remain closed for more than a month, this will happen again. $90 million or almost $100 million that you've mentioned, this is a monthly measure in terms of economic impact? Yes. Uh, Quebec's economy, to what extent can it support measures like that? What's the percentage of the GDP? Or what's the maximum amount of money that can be allotted for that in order to support businesses like that because they're, they're being closed down? Answer with Yves Girard, my colleague uh, at Finances. We discuss about this every day. Great question. We have a really uh, solid uh, program for recovery. Uh, we've identified seven uh, big files, channels, if you want, for recovery, a very precise program at the government level. And the infrastructure must remain, as such as we said. This is an ecosystem. We're talking about the bars, restaurants, and small and medium-sized businesses. At the end of the crisis, we don't want to be facing a situation where all businesses are dead. We don't want to face a decimation of businesses. So $100 million for October, it's a lot of money, but that's to sustain our structures. We'll comply with uh, public health authorities. We react to what they do, of course, but we are assessing things to determine how broad uh, the impacts are regarding the closure of restaurants. The month of October will uh, teach us a lot of things, and then we'll be able to analyze and make decisions. We'll have to make sure as a government to make sure that the broadly defined infrastructure is sustained, because if we don't do anything and we just work in terms of uh, short-term basis, then we'll need eventually to find something else. But we've been having those discussions uh, every day at the Department of Finance. We've entertained uh, those topics. Question. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was saying that uh, he was preparing a program for like the greater Montreal region and Quebec. What are the discussions you've had with the federal level? What elements should be comprised within this future federal program that was announced by Justin Trudeau? Answer. I've talked to Mr. Justin Trudeau a few days ago. Uh, tonight, I have another discussion round with Mr. Trudeau. He told me, indeed, that in terms of the closed uh, uh, businesses like restaurants and bars, the federal government is interested in uh, uh, contributing. The best approach for the federal government would be to insert itself within the program, be part of the program we're uh, announcing today so that we'd have some type of cost sharing amongst the two levels of government. Two motions were submitted uh, this morning uh, around the Aboriginal uh, file. The, the population is shocked by what happened. Mr. Legault, can we guarantee First Nations and their members that situations like the one we've seen recently, that this will never happen again, that a First Nations member um, will never have to face such a cruel situation as what we've seen recently? Answer, I've talked to the uh, husband of the victim recently. That's what I told him. I'm going to do everything that I can in order to make sure that this doesn't happen again. There are programs right now that we've been elaborating uh, in order to train employees, uh, those that are part of the networks, including the health network. This is part also of the recommendations um, uh, that are, are comprise the Vien Rapport. Rapport Vien. We've been working with the different First Nations, the different peoples. There are different peoples and nations, and within each nation, Nation, Aboriginal nation, there are some communities that prefer to have their own spokesperson. So this is a difficult task, but we've been working on all recommendations as pertains uh, to the uh, Vien report, and we don't wish this to happen. Indeed, we were working already in the past uh, towards training the network employees. We had been doing that in the past. Question from the Journal Metro. Gentlemen, I'd like to come back to the red zones quickly. Dr. Arruda, what are the scientific data that you base yourself uh, regarding the outer, outdoor public gatherings? Outdoor public gatherings. You based yourself on what scientific data? We mentioned the fact earlier that uh, uh, the spray was airborne. 
the, the spread, the spread of the virus would be airborne. I'm sorry here, but uh, the, there's a theory on that, right? What's the scientific data that you've considered? And also the, the famous, uh, the well-known lifts, you know, when you're traveling in your car. What do we do for the red zones in that respect. Great questions. I mean, it's all in the details, of course, but I'll try to answer with my own analysis. When we talk about scientific data, I want to be clear here. This is a pandemic about a new virus. And the enforcement of the current guidelines and measures of ours, this has not been studied with um, comparables between one country and another one. We don't have yet all the evidence-based data. We are dealing with judgment. Uh, from experts, we study all the data that's been conducted elsewhere, studies that show some effects. They're not necessarily thorough, scientifically speaking, in terms of evidence base. We look at other situations that occurred elsewhere. We try to see what are the situations that generate more social contacts that have impacts on different types of behavior. We know fairly well that all situations when there's alcohol, there's a relaxing in terms of individual behaviors when there's alcohol. Now, in terms of uh, a, an outdoor event, you could ask me the question. The, the best question that I'd like to know is how many cases in Quebec were created by gatherings. And in terms of uh, mask, when people were wearing masks and when people were not wearing masks, those types of gatherings, then we would have a scientific framework in terms of data. But we can't do that because the question has not been asked necessarily and that people will not, will not report on that because they don't want to create uh, logical um, associations between those things. It depends on the qualitative and quantitative data that we do analyze, and I've been discussing also with my uh, public health directors. Uh, we've been talking about uh, uh, the different outbreaks. There might be 25 outbreaks, but or maybe just one case or another case somewhere else. There might be one bar that will generate 50, 60, 80 cases, and then this will be spread uh, throughout the community at work uh, uh, in different families and so on. I wish we would have a different frame if we had the I ideal computer that would tell us, okay, now we need to launch a red zone phase. This would be easier. But no, this would be my dream. There's a fine line between closing businesses and other considerations. We are really, really um, feeling it. You know, things are reassessed every day. When we close restaurants, this is painful for us. If you have the perfect recipe, give it to me, please. It's not easy. It's a different, a difficult call. Question, what about the uh, car travels? Answer, I'll answer. Don't do it if you can. Otherwise, use a mask, wear a mask. Again, again, if you were uh, in contact with someone like that, don't uh, uh, go uh, uh, in a car with somebody else. If you're asymptoma asymptomatic, um, try to uh, opt for distancing if it's possible. If it's your only way um, to go to work, that's one thing. It's necessary. If it's to have fun, it's a different thing, you know. You have to be able to determine things and make the right call. We're not having a new lockdown. No, we're just mitigating things through some uh, stricter rules about uh, social contacts. A question about downtown. What do you want to do? Downtown was closed once, no customers were there, and then what do you do for uh, uh, downtown Montreal? Answer. The program we have today will enable businesses to reopen eventually, in spite of the closures. The watchword here is that we want people to co come back to uh, the offices. We need people to go back to the office settings. We're at 25% maybe in terms of occupancy rate. But again, we have plans and there are key things we will do, but the most important thing is that we have to bring back people into the office towers, as we call them, or the office settings. Question in English. Do you, do you have now uh, can you hear me? I'm, I'm a little further than usual, I know. Yes, I know. Yes. But I'm, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, Listen, deep okay. from one ear, but I, I hear well from this one. Uh, yes. So you're on the, the right side. That's I, I okay. Know, I'm, um, <laughs> but that's true. I'm really deep. I know. Yeah, you've mentioned this before. We've been here since March. Yes. We are friends now. <laughs> 
Uh, do you have a projection on what, would, what could happen in the next few weeks in terms of the number of cases and deaths? And if, sh and if so, what do they show, given the, the numbers that keep growing uh, every day now? Do you have a projection? I'm always afraid of telling numbers, because you're going to see me two weeks from now. You told that, and that's not the case. In fact, I cannot really tell, tell you. It will depend how our actions now are going to have an effect on the curve. You know, the curve is going not as in the spring, but it's not, it's not, it's not going down. So, in, in fact, if I hope, and I ask everybody to do what they're supposed to do, we are, will be able to reflatten that curve or at least make it going slower. Because if we had not at those cases that we have now around 8,000, 9, 9, 9, not 8,000, 800, 900 would come 2,000, and it can double that that way. And it's why now the only way to put is to put the brakes by lowering socialization and contacts in between persons. There was, uh, for my second question, Mr. Le Président, there was a, uh, um, uh, a, an incident this morning where uh, dozens of kids walked out of class in La Salle. Uh, they were unhappy because they're spending it, their day in a classroom and the windows don't open. Um, do you have concerns about their, their health in this context? In, uh, I, I haven't been in that class. I don't have the details, so I, I just perhaps not want to comment on this specific situation. But I think that I, I think that it's important to have some ventilation, and, and the, I think perhaps there is some issues with some schools, and 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 we are recommended to open open windows if possible. There is all, all kinds of strategies that could be made in the environment to make it easier. Because that's not only in the context of COVID, that could be also in the context of other things. So I, I think that uh, this situation must be, must be looked by the school, by the school, by the school board, and public health can also help if there is a uh, specific health issue related to that. Ketsuni, uh, the CBC. Um, I'll go back to uh, the génie en herbe on the rules in English. Are you ready? OK. Uh, we understand that if two people go for a walk, they don't have to wear a mask if they, uh, they keep the two-meter distance. Am I right with this? In fact, there are two people from the same place, the same... Uh, no, two friends. Two friends. They, yes, but just make, make, make sure that you, you outside, you, you will be really always at two meters. Uh, I, I would suggest that they wear their mask, but it's all sometimes difficult to, to keep the two meters, okay. you know? If they are going to jogging one over there and one over there, that they are not, in fact, together. But as soon as you get into the two meters zone, you have a tendency to underestimate the, the, the okay. place. We have those plexiglasses now because, in fact, we are not really at two meters. We could understand that we are two meters. And when you take the tape, that's not two meters. So I would recommend if you want to uh, 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 gonna jog with uh, your uh, neighbor, or uh, just make sure that you have very more than two meters and use the mask if possible, at least when you're going to be uh, stopping trying to talk together. Can I, 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 I'm just going to ask a clarification, Louis, and then I'll go to my second question. I'm not supposed to do that because uh, no? it's a one question, one. Uh... Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay, I'll go, I'll, I'll, I'll continue with the Génie en Herbe. Um, if a family organize a play date, and uh, uh, with two, uh, a private, uh, if you go to a like a playground and uh, okay. you have t two families from with two chi two children, like uh, one child, one child, one child, and they are in the same classroom bubble, can they play together and you know not necessarily respecting the two meter distance? I would not recommend it. Uh, you know, uh, even if the, they are, it's true, they are under two bubbles. Uh, uh, you, you mean two families, two kids from the each family go to one classroom mm. and they are together? Mm. Okay. In theory, they have been exposed to another one to another one. I don't know where they what they done in class. If they were in class, trying to keep being even if there is bubbles in class, sometimes there is more distance than playing all together, you know? 
the risk is not zero uh, uh, in that perspective. I would say nobody is going to probably give um, an, an, an amount uh, for, for this. I think, in theory, it could be. But the problem is, how are you going to do with the two other kids who are not from the same bubble to not play with them to get together? It's more the situation that it's will. It's a situation that will will favorize that will enhance the risk of people getting together because. Is it really true that you're going to be able to say to this one, you cannot play with the other because you are not in the same bubble? You know, it's it's exposing yourself. Uh, I think more trouble than 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 not trouble. That's my, that's going to be my answer. But you know that we cannot put in a decree. Uh, this that situation. There is so much situation. There is families with four fathers, or I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's very complex. So it's very difficult for us. But, but I think in this situation, if it's done, the issue will not be probably that the two kids work together. It's the impact on the, on, on the others. I, I hope I'm clear. If I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a good genie en herbe. En herbe. Probably not, but <laughs> you can get better. I'm sure you will. <laughs> Kelly Craig, the CTV. Hello. I'm in Phil's spot today. Um, I will have to unfortunately pick up on the same kind of question because there's so many, we get many questions from our viewers asking what are the rules, can I do this, can I do this? So we have people, for example, like gym classes that go outside. So gyms are open, but in the park, is it a gathering? So really, what are the rules for being outside? When is it a gathering that is a banned gathering? First of all, if you go to the gym and you are going to practice in your gym and there is distance of two meters, you don't use the, the, the showers, you don't use a thing, you can do that activity. But when you get out, we don't want you to stay in a, uh, with your friends, having your beer uh, on, around the car. You cannot suppose, or even uh, water, you know, because then you are not, uh, you are from different bubbles, you are not. You are, you are there not for an essential issue, it's not for work, it's because you are so, making socialization. This is, not, is forbidden. Am I clear with this? But when, when is it, uh, to, to clarify, when has that become a band gathering? Is it when it is social, uh, even though, you know, we talked about kids in parks? It, when it's, it's social, in, in fact, if I go okay. The job is on the detail. And I want to tell you, we are uh, working on those issues, and there is going to be in the websites some answers of those type of questions. Okay. But uh, suppose uh, you are going to walk with your family where you live with to a park, Parc du Mont Royal, okay? There is those family are at a, always at a distance of two meters. They are not there for a meeting. They are not there for a, a festa. They are not there for a manifestation. This is OK, because you are staying separated from the others, and you are in a space where you can walk or, or, or practice your sport if you are alone. And so for my second question, it's actually on the announcement of the day for Mr. Fitzgibbon. Um, I'd like to talk about for workers themselves. So we have um, money for businesses, but what about for workers? Are you really letting Ottawa take care of that with the employment insurance and Quebec is giving nothing for workers? Yeah, well, I think uh, I'll answer another question earlier that um, the idea here is not to duplicate. For example, on the rent side, we have a, we have a federal program to assist on rent subsidy, which the 23,000 companies in Quebec have benefited from that rent subsidy. If that is to prevail, we're not going to be adding on a fixed cost on the rent. Otherwise, there'll be duplication. So there's no duplication. The principle here is that the federal government has done a good job on the uh, wage subsidy, for example, which will continue until June 2021. It's modulated about, uh, depending on the lack of revenue. So that the subsidy on the on the employment side, federal is doing it. So we're taking care of the other fixed costs. Otherwise, it'll be duplicating, which makes no sense. Uh, we'll conclude with uh, global.
the question from Global in English. Go back to the students who walked out of their school, but my question is actually for uh, Mr. Legault because um, the students uh, say that they uh, walked out of their classes today because they are so overcrowded and uh, keeping that two meters of distance uh, between them is, is impossible because the classrooms are so crowded. Um, and they're asking for a number of modifications. But what do you say to those students and parents and students in general who say they do not feel safe inside the classroom? But first, I don't know exactly the situation you're mentioning. Uh, so what's the size of the classroom? Uh, uh, are we talking about high school or uh, how old are the kids? And um, But uh, right now we're following, we follow the uh, guidelines of the health uh, public, the public health. So uh, I, I feel confident that uh, the rules are okay. Okay, and my second question is for uh, Mr. Fitzgibbon about the, um, the I don't know how to say it in English, the money that you are giving for fixed expenses. Is it enough? We've heard from uh, the opposition parties today saying that they wanted to see more grants, less loans. You've announced $15,000. Um, is that enough to, to save these businesses to make sure they don't go under? Well, listen, I mean, it's never enough, right? But there is a rigor that uh, needs to prevail in this government. And uh, as I said earlier, we are allocating $100 million. That's going to be the cost of the program. Uh, basically, you know, 12,000 enterprises which will close, take 75% of those at uh, $10,000, dollars $90 million. Um, if you look at the average fixed expenses, if you exclude salary, um, you're about at $13,000. So we feel that we are hitting the average. So if we compensate the fixed costs for the month of October, excluding salary, while the federal is taking care of the wage subsidy, I think it's enough. I mean, of course, we could double that, but I mean, it would, it would be totally a lack of rigor for us to do that. So it's $100 million we're allocating. I feel comfortable that we are allowing these companies to survive that month. Some restaurants, bar enterprises are facing probably extinction. And then we're not going to put money if we don't believe they're going to get out of the, of the dole's drum. So I think, I think it's a program that I feel extremely comfortable with in the, in the current circumstances. And we have to adjust as we move forward. But for today, I think it's a good program. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Thank you very much.